Everybody says when they start their YouTube channel that the reason why they started their journey mostly if you are starting a YouTube channel about business or what you do as an entrepreneur, everybody says, yeah, man, like I'm just doc going to document my journey. And I'll be honest, like that's actually what I did for me. Like this is the, that's, that was the reason why I started this channel in the first place. But since I actually started to grow and since the moment that I started to have people reaching out to me, literally asking for advice and just liking the content that I've been doing, of course, like I have been putting the reps in the sense that, well, I've been in business for three years already, I have been able to grow a really successful company. And well, because of the reason I actually know how to talk about certain things and that's what I, of course, talk about. I honestly lost a little bit of that initial intentionality that I had when I started the YouTube channel. So in full transparency, what I will do for this video is just go straight up and let you guys know what I have been learning from, well, hiring my first ever high ticket closer for my coaching company. And well, I will also just in the meantime, drop some value on general lessons I had from building sales teams for my clients, okay? And of course, like just so you guys know, and before you guys start thinking about something random, um, well, I actually do have a lot of knowledge in BA training, appointment setting training, SDR training, because I mean, that's what we do for clients pretty much. But when it comes to the actual closers, that's not something that I don't know how to actually go around it. I mean, for me, for myself, like this is the first time that I hire one. So yeah, I will just drop some thoughts and what am I rationalizing this entire journey and in this entire um, stage of where I'm at with my journey, guys. So if you'd like to see a 25 year old that is over there in the trenches, figuring things out and well, just basically sit down on a Google Doc as I always do, explaining what I've been thinking about. Well, let's hop to the computer and let's get started right away. If not, well, you can just continue watching all the other content that is about things that I do know a lot about and that I'm sure that you will enjoy, okay? That being said, let's hop to the computer and let's get started right away. Bye. Before we start this document, you can get by joining our free Facebook group, which you can get with the link in the description or in the comment section. And all you gotta do is come to this master resource folder that you're going to see here and come and drive. That way you will get access to this document that you're looking at right now, plus all of the other documents that we have in our master resource folder, as you can see here. The goal of hiring in general is getting your time back so that you can do more. And that more can do can be either business related, can be whatever it is, it is that you want. You're pretty much paying to somebody to do something that you will have been doing yourself for whatever reason. Honestly, it was just till last year that I started to really value and understand the importance of hiring. Because in the past, I used to have this scarcity mindset of, hey man, like it was so hard for me to get X amount of dollars, say for example, $9,000, $10,000. And it's like, dude, like I don't really have that much money. I feel like I need to, to save all if I can, etc. And reality is until the, the moment that you start having somebody that helps you, that you start booking more, for example, in, my, in our case, if we're selling high ticket services, you start booking more calls, closing more calls, you start doing everything more. 10x in your inputs in such a way that you can just start 10x in your outputs. I know that's not like super mind blowing to say, but if you have never hired anybody, that's what you feel. You feel like, hey man, I don't have that much money. Why should I hire? And I just want to say this right off the bat because if you're watching this video, chances are that you are maybe thinking of, of hey man, should I hire a BA or appointment setter, etc. And one of the things that I can definitely let you guys know is that as a coaching company that also places BAs and SDRs, something that we always come across with is people that just hire out of pure desperation or simply not wanting to do any more work themselves. And again, nothing wrong with that, but what happens is that you really need, when you're hiring anybody, you need to really understand why is it that you're hiring in the first place, okay? And that being said, of course, I just want to share what I've been learning and what I have been taking into consideration now that I've been going through this hiring process. And the first thing that I want to say is that some of the trainings and people that I've been learning from when it comes to hiring uh, closers and sales team is number one, Cole Gordon. Like if you actually go to his channel, uh, well, he's actually one of my mentors and most of the things that I know about sales and things that I know about building sales teams, etc., come from him, okay? So Con Gordon, Alex and Lila Ramosi, they have some incredible trainings. And last but not least, the single most valuable training that I found to build my sales team, and in this specific case, my, my closing team, like the people that just are going to close my sales calls, is from a podcast called How to Scale an Agency. This podcast is actually by two or three guys um, from Jordan Ross, Lucas James, and another guy that I don't, honestly don't know who what his name is. But this podcast, they, they have an episode that they published on October or September of last year, if I'm not mistaken. And it's literally about, it's literally called Build a Seven Figure Sales Team. And I mean, like I've been hearing to their podcast for a while already. And honestly, they have dropped lots of bangers, lots of value. Okay. And honestly, that this entire structure that I'm following, it was taken from a single podcast, to be honest. 
And yeah, uh, I really just want to mention um, that so that you understand like, what are the things that I have been consuming that have led me to believe what I believe, okay? Before I go over the process and the actual rationale behind me wanting to hire a closer and the actual process that I'm following to hire my closer, I just want to let you know why am I hiring a closer right now, okay? And the simple answer is honestly just because I have more leverage if I actually hire a closer. Not only in terms of time, aka like I don't have to attend the sales calls, but it's because I can actually dedicate more time to the things that I'm actually great at. So, for example, I'm great at booking calls. Like, literally have zero problems with appointment setting. Like, for me, booking calls is the easiest thing on earth. Mostly, if you top it up with our actual human prospecting process, and if you have such a great BA team like I have already. But guess what? I'm, not actually, I'm honestly really, really bad at closing those calls. And because I'm stuck at that situation, like that's the reality that I'm at, then it makes sense for me to actually hire a closer now. Most people will advise you, hey man, closing is the last thing that you want to delegate because the first thing that you want to delegate is the actual outreach, the appointment setting, uh, fulfillment, etc. If you're running an agency, I do agree. I do agree, believe that you should be, if you're running, a, for example, a PPC agency, a Facebook ads agency, any sort of paid ads agency, honestly, any sort of agency, the first hire you should have is some fulfillment or client success. But if you're a coach or a consultant or you're running some sort of more productized service, I do believe that appointment setter should, could be a better hire if you're good at closing or sales. Or if you are like me, like you are not that good at sales and closing, um, well, hiring a closer and you still doing the appointment setting can, do, can be a better idea. So that's the rationale behind me taking this decision, right? And I'll be honest, guys, it's like now I'll be able to book more calls and someone that's better than me at closing will be, able to, will be able to close more calls. This is, in sum, the main reason why I'm doing things like that. Now, again, I just want to remind you what I said just a couple of minutes ago. If you, for whatever reason, are really just hiring out of desperation because you simply don't want to work more, then guess what happens? This is not going to work. In my case, let me just show you. Like this last week, for example, we have been really just focusing on improving the quality of our program, as you can see here. Well, let me just show you. Like, well, these are the models that we have in our paid program, right? And realistically, I have been wanting to, for example, everything that you see in purple, I, I have been wanting to uh, improve, update, etc. because honestly, our program is super long. There are lots of things inside, like literally hours and hours of content. So because of that reason, guys, plus the fact that I'm looking to hire a setter, this week we really decided not to book that many calls. But still, guys, let me just show you. This week, 10, 15 calls. Like last week, we had 20, 30 calls or something. The week before that, again, a whole bunch of calls. And what I'm trying to say is the following. Like, what's happening is that all of that has been me doing the appointment setting and the closing. Of course, I have that my team that is, and they are responsible for sending the initial album to my prospects. I mean, imagine just for example, look at this guys, like one, two, three, four, five calls in one day. And I don't know, having these calls here in 10, 15 minutes, just because that makes people actually come earlier to the calls and increases the show up rate. But honestly, these are, these are calls that take 20, 30 minutes each, approximately. So that would be, by that already, like two, three hours per day. Imagine two, three hours per day minimum that you are losing just taking calls. That is time that you can be spending creating more content, doing more appointment setting, doing more follow-ups, or literally whatever it might be, improving the product, etc. And for me, it's just making a lot of sense because it's on top of that, just on the fact that I'm literally not that good at, at closing, I'm way better at other things then guess what's going to happen? It's just more and more leverage, okay? So that's the rationale behind doing this decision. I just want to share an important note. This is not to say that then you can have somebody, someone that is better than you at anything and run a business just like that. Like, for example, if you are just getting started from scratch and you are like, okay, man, uh, I have a little bit of money because maybe I have a nine to five. Let me hire a closer. Let me hire a, a client success manager. Let me hire an appointment setter. Let me hire BAs. It's not going to work if you do it like that because you really need to learn basic skills for everything because if you don't have a strong foundation, first of all, people aren't even going to respect you. Your closers are not even going to have any sort of um, incentive to close people because they are not going to believe in the product. So for example, for us, why does this work? Well, first of all, because we have a bunch of case studies and testimonials because we already have a validated offer and overall messaging that is on point because we already have fulfilling and delivery systems because we already have a process to support growth and operations because we already have an appointment setting system to predictably book calls. Like just because of all of these things are in place and hire a closer right now without having to break a sweat, as they say. There is only one exception and just want to make sure that this is um, understood by all of you guys. And it is that if you have an offer, like you already know what offer you're looking to push to who, and you're pretty much good to go in the actual foundations of your business. 
and then you have the right guidance you are looking to work with us and you're just a beginner of course in that case we also can help you out um, you can have prospecting BAs or Roylands SDRs if you value your hourly rate at more than three dollars per hour okay this is the only exception I would find if you are really just a beginner and the main reason why is because of course if you are just a beginner we already have people that can do just the heavy lifting that is actually really hard for you. Like doing the initial admin to people on Instagram or on Facebook or on Twitter or on whatever it might be, right? That's something that is really, really important because right now if you're a beginner, of course, what's going to happen is that you need to find, because we already have people that are going to find your leads that are going to do that initial messaging to them. Like the heavy lifting of the actual album messaging is going to be done for you, absolutely. We have those people, like, let me just show you again. Like for example, so that you can see on our actual program, the one that we use for, for training BAs, etc. Like, if you take a look at this, like these people already know how to um, use the KPI tracker, how to use CRMs, like how to source and find leads, how to do outreach on Instagram, on Twitter, on Facebook, on LinkedIn, in all of these platforms, in such a way that they can already do that work for you. All you would have to do, and this is why we actually want to keep this model like that, is because once somebody shows a reply, to the initial album message that your BAs are going to be doing for you, then you are going to do the actual appointment setting, like actually doing the back and forth and coordinating basically when you want to chat with them, okay? Like when you're going to have the chat. But this is the only exception um, when it comes to the actual, let's say, skill set that you need in order to make sure that your hires are effective, okay? But yeah, uh, let me just go and do a little bit of a demonstration on how this is going to be looking, for, looking like for my business. Uh, before I walk you through a process that I'm using. And again, I, I know that this might not be like one of those super insightful videos where you might, where I might be able to tell you, hey man, this is how you do this and how you do that, because this is mostly what showing what I'm thinking about and what I'm going through, okay? So this is our album sales thing. Like at the moment, let me just take this over here. At the moment, we have basically our Roylands, our Roylands BAs, people that do appointment setting and the people that do closing. And guess what happens? Right now, the people that do appointment setting is me, and the person that is doing the closing is me, okay? Now, the main reason why I myself am doing appointment setters, even if I, of course, train and place appointment setters for my clients, is because, like I told you, because I'm great at appointment setters. Like, that's literally what I'm the best at, okay? So, again, because I want leverage, I just want to focus on what I'm good at, and what I'm not that good at, guess what happens? I want to delegate that to somebody else. Again, most people would say, hey man, no, you cannot have a closer in here if you don't have uh, an appointment setter before. But again, if I'm great at doing one thing, why on earth would I delegate that to somebody so that I can do something where I don't have leverage at? So I hope that that makes sense. But basically, uh, well, Sion and Luis, this is a pair of rock stars. Fun fact, they are cousins. <laughs> so it's incredible to, to have a team with people that, well, are family. But basically, my BAs, they send me warm and hot leads every single day from the album prospecting efforts that they are doing. And then guess what happens? I have limited time because I have to spend, let's say, one half of my day doing the closing and then one half of my day doing the setting, right? If I literally didn't have to spend this time in here and I just can spend like one full day or let's say uh, the time that I spend on closing, but now doing appointment setting, the actual inputs that I can do literally multiply themselves in such a way that I can have now one person that has high leverage, managing more calls booked and closing more calls than I would ever be able to do, okay? So this is the rationale and this is the reason why I'm literally just hiring my closers because I'm building my album sales team and I am the highest leverage type of person that, that can get people to book a call, okay? And of course, I'm not the highest leverage type of person that can get people to close, to close calls, okay? Now, um, before we continue, I want to just walk you through a process that I went through in the first stage of, of hiring my closer and then what's going to happen next, okay? So the first thing that I did was actually finding the right candidates. And what I did honestly was made a post on Twitter and ask other entrepreneurs in my network if they know a killer closer. This actually was a tweet, as you can see here. I just literally just say, I just said, looking to hire a killer closer to, a, to sell a high ticket coaching offer, 10% commission, some cash. Let me know in the comments and we'll hop on a call. That's literally all I did. I got lots of people that reached out to me. I, uh, I actually asked some friends of mine. They proposed different people. Again, I hop on calls with around seven people, okay? Now, again, that was actually the second part of the journey. I hopped on calls with candidates to bet their experience and just to see if there was that human to human connection. Like for me, that's super, something that's really important. Like actually making sure that I can preserve that culture of my company, that I can interact with other people and that I actually like talking with a person. Like if, even if the person was the best closer on earth, 
I don't think that I would be able to have me have him or her in my company if I literally didn't resonate with I don't know hopping on calls with them every other week just uh, diagnosing and auditing the sales call that they record for example so that's really really important then what happened was is that after the calls that I had with these people only three made it to the second part pretty much what I did between the first stage and the second one and just so you know like in the first stage what i did was pretty much just hop on calls and be like hey God, um, for example hey enrique well i just want to know your background etc like literally just a normal interview like hey what what do you do what's your experience why do you want this position all of that good jazz and then the people that made it inside or that made it to stage two what i did was record a simple loom like the one that you're seeing right now and this is actually super meta because i'm making a, a loom recording of a loom video and as you can see here, and as you can see here, uh, I just basically explained what our offer is all about, what it includes, the appointment setting process that we use, the sales process that we use, how I typically pitch the offer, some downsells that we might be able to do in case that somebody doesn't buy the, the full package, etc. I just basically explained everything to them. And what I said is basically, okay, um, let's hope, let's book a call for next week. And actually, the calls will be two days from now. And yeah, basically with what you know right now, I want you to pitch me my offer. So this is what's going to happen next in the hiring process that we're going to. Uh, I'm going to do rock this with these people so that they can pitch me my offer and see who's better. Good salespeople are born, not made. And this is something that of course is not mine. It's actually something that I learned from Alex or Mosley. Like I told you, I have been binge watching those videos to see how I can best hire my closers. And guys, I'll be honest, like he literally said, and I, it makes a lot of sense to me. Somebody doesn't really have it in them like it's really hard to just learn the skill of, of sales like in my case even if i'm not really that good the reason why i've been able to close and actually scale my company is because i really truly believe in my product and i truly believe that if i don't close you for example i'm doing a disservice and but just because i have that confidence i can close but if somebody can have that confidence because they will be able to know the case studies and the results from our clients and on top of that they are really skilled at that again just uh, that's just leverage so if somebody doesn't close the first uh, at least three out of the next 10 calls that they take they are out so it's not like they are going to be hard it's, still, it's that they are going to be on trial of course they are going to have their commission all of that good jazz but if they don't close at 30 percent the next 10 calls that's what's going to happen and then once we have a winner then he or she well only he because no girls <laughs> were interested then he will become a full hire so that's the process that i'm taking right now in order to scale my business to grab my closers and pretty much just well i just wanted to share that with you guys and yeah just again document my journey as they'd say and yeah i will just finish the video saying that if you are running a marketing agency smma or a high ticket info business like a coaching or consulting business go ahead and book a call with us since pretty much that can be the best decision that you'll ever take in your life in order to scale your business and we pretty much help you with a whole bunch of other stuff all related to client acquisition so guys Hope that you enjoyed this one. And if you like this type of one-to-one -one conversations on what has been happening with my life, feel free to just drop a comment and let me know since I don't know if this is something that you enjoy in the first place. So yeah, guys, hope that you enjoyed this and see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.